Uh, so we will start, and I'd like to introduce you our next speaker, Maciek Gorski, and uh, he will tell us about um, uh, how to make your Android uh, banking app uh, an open source. Thank you very much. This is exactly what I expected, like Jonathan on the third floor and everybody's there. So I'm, I'm happy you are here. I'm sad, I'm also sad you are here because I cannot go to Jonathan's presentation <laughs> because of that. So uh, I will talk about something today. Uh, the title of the presentation is how to make your, uh, making your Android app open source. Uh, but first, a few questions. Uh, how many of you are Android developers here? Everybody, almost. That's cool. That, that's what I expect. And actually, I am not going to talk about uh, mobile banking apps uh, or even making everything open source. And actually, I don't have a slide about myself, so that will be a slide about myself. That's me. Like, I would, li I would love everything would be open source. Because why not? It's running on my device, so I should be able to see the code I'm running, even if it's a banking app. I, I know it won't happen like in the near future, but yeah, I would love to, to have that. So before I, I tell you what the presentation is about, really, uh, two, two stories. So there is uh, this uh, little red riding hood. And in the story, there's also a wolf, which pretends to be uh, grandma, right? Uh, so the story is like, it's the, uh, the uh, girl is coming to the house, and there's like a weird conversation about ears and eyes. And uh, if you were on the, second, uh, on the previous presentation, you should probably know what I will be asking about right now. So how to make the conversation like easier for, uh, for the girl? Uh, like to, so he, she knows that uh, the wolf is the wolf. So it's, you probably already know it's about security. So any, any guesses? Keys. Keys. Exactly, certificates. So if, if the grandma had this certificate, her, her gra grandchildren would already know it's something is probably not right. So uh, certificate pinning, right? But still, the, uh, the presentation is not about certificate pinning, uh, even though the conversation would be like, yeah, you're not my grandma. So I'm, get, I'm, get, I'm out of here. So the, the presentation is actually about doing the opposite thing. So imagine you are a grandma, which is a server you, you connect to, like all your children come and stuff. And you have little red riding hood, uh, hood uh, like writing you on Messenger or calling you. And how, how do you know it's, it's her? So the question is, can you figure out as a server that who, you're, you're, who is talking to you is who you trust? The other way around, then certificate pinning, where if you talk to the server, you know it's the server and not something in the middle. Any guesses here? Like, you can try anything. So it has, uh, it has some hash, uh, hash value uh, around uh, maybe 6 or, and we can, uh, we can check that, as I know, uh, Google API sometimes, you need to set it up and... Uh, so, so you have an API key, right? Something... Yeah, I, have, I mean, I mean uh, not an API key, it can be easily obfuscated, uh, uh, and uh, so I mean that... Uh, uh, each PK is, is signed with a K, right? Yeah. So, uh, and this K has some hash sum. I mean, and we okay. can set, set up this hash sum and check validate. As I know, uh, so, so the client sends it to the server. So how do you know 
I didn't take it from the real app and put it in mine this, the same value. That's the reason that I came for this presentation. <laughs> that, that's good. So actually, I can show you a silly example of uh, like calling, uh, you probably don't see it, maybe I'll try to zoom it a bit. Can you see it now? So at the bottom, there's this important stuff. We are uh, doing a call to Google APIs, Android check something, and here we say that we are some application with some package, and we have uh, we are signed with some certificate, and we have this API key, which is from uh, from this side basically, which you also don't see, but this console developers Google console. So I can do a, a call to the API from outside of the application and it re responds correctly, like, I'm this application, I just proved it. And to prove you that it actually checks something, let me change the package name to safetynet.2 and it responds with error, right? So, so the first call was actually validating that it's my application or someone else's application. And I can get these three values from the application without, without any problems. Like, even if it's obfuscated, it will probably take me maybe a day or a bit longer, but I can get a package name, I can get uh, its like hash of the certificate, and I can get this uh, API key easily. So that's not a solution. Let's go back to slides. So this guy who is also Red Hood can like get all the cookies from Grandma because he can get these keys, right? So how to fix that? Have you heard about safety net? Who, who has heard about safety net? Raise your hands. Perfect audience, that's what I was expecting. It's a safety net for Android. It's actually a library from Google. I'm glad you haven't heard about this because every time I talk to someone, it's like, safety net, what, what's that? And this is the topic of the presentation. We'll cover how to actually be sure that as a server, you know you, who you're talking to. So this is a, a simple setup. We have a, a app on phone. We have a server, which is my laptop. And there is Google, which will help us. And uh, as an app, you connect to Google with some really easy API. Then you send the data from Google to server, and it can validate with Google or without Google that you are, uh, you are the app that you are saying you are. And from the Android point of view, the, this is a really, really simple API right now. It's changed uh, like a month ago because it's in Google Play services. So you, you basically call this ATTST method and you, you get some callbacks, right? So there are two values there. Nonce, who knows what's nonce? You know, there? What's, what's nonce? Yeah, basically it's a, it's a random value, and the name is actually number used once. The once is in the, uh, in the name, but it's a basically a ram random number used once, or it, it could be incremented, but it doesn't matter. And there is also an API key, which is a shame, uh, and it's changed uh, like recently too, that they now require this API key. Uh, because you can get it from the client and use it for other stuff. I'll talk about it later. Uh, so when you call this, what you get from uh, Google is this. This is the most important slide of, of the presentation. If there's one thing you need to remember, it's this. Like I'll give you a few seconds to, uh, to try to uh, 
analyze this. This is basically base64, and there are some dots here, here and here. And this is base, three base64 values. Uh, so we'll need to go deeper and like unscramble it, what, what's there. Because it's basically like some uh, JSONs inside. And inside, the first value contains uh, certificates. Uh, these are certificates from Google. Um, and there are two. Uh, and it's basically, it's longer. It's as, as long as the first slide, but I, I didn't want to put that uh, all. Uh, and if we go even deeper, then the certificates are basically uh, DR encoded uh, certificates, so we can get some stuff from them. So again, base64, public key from the certificate, and you can see it's like uh, not very important, but it's uh, working un until the end of the year uh, from Google. And this is the important part. It's for attestandroid.com. And the second uh, is actually uh, issued by GeoTrust, which we trust because it's GeoTrust. <laughs> and it's big and it's like the root certificate is everywhere, so uh, it's not included in, in this uh, response from Google. So let's go back to the, the most important slide of this presentation. And so we know what's this. This is some, some certificates, okay? And what is this? This is basically uh, all the important data you got from Google. So how it works, uh, the safety net uh, installs some programs on your device and it monitors the system and it, it can tell you a lot of uh, stuff about, not, it, it can tell Google a lot of stuff, what's happening there. Uh, so what we get from Google is, uh, is some values. There is first nonce, which you send to them, so you, you can match the request with response uh, on the server. And there is this very important timestamp, which is when, when this was created. And how, as you can see, it's 1.5 billion seconds since uh, 1970 which was actually yesterday. Did you party because of that? That was a huge party yesterday. It was like between two and three a.m., like huge, even here in Minsk. And everybody was connecting the whole world, like th this epoch party, like crazy. Okay, and there is some, some information about our application, which is my package name and uh, you probably don't recognize it, but it's a certificate. Instead of uh, hex, it's base64 again, because base64 inside base64 works pretty well. Uh, so this is the, the certificate, the hash of the certificate that signed the application. And there is uh, even with something which is pretty cool. This is a, a hash of the application itself. So. Uh, the system like hashes your application and uh, gets the uh, SCH value of the application. So if you have two different, uh, you compiled it two times, you you will have this different value for that. So you can have like uh, match it with version and know which version of the application is doing uh, the call and some some data. Uh, that says something about if, sim if system is trusted. This is CTS profile match. If this is true, then you can trust all these values. Like if it's false, then probably something in, in the system is, might be hacking it, and you, you might get uh, uh, false from, uh, from there. So probably like different package name is returned for your application or, or whatnot. I don't know. And probably the most important thing is extension, which I have no idea what it is, but it's there. And it's base64, so it's, it must be important. Yeah. 
but I, I have no idea what's, what's this. But yeah, it's there. So that, that was what you get on the client side. And let's see what we can do with it on the server side. Because after you get it from, from the server, from, uh, from, the Go from Google, from Google Play services, you probably want to send it to server to prove that you are yourself. We'll see that, that during the pre uh, demo. So basically, on the server, you first verify the signature of the, of the whole thing. So the third thing, that, which I didn't show, was the signature of the first two values. So you know Google signed this, and you can verify that all the plain text data, which is in base64, so it's not plain text and it's like encrypted, is true, is from Google. So th this is a simple call. And later you, you want to verify that the, uh, the private key is connected to the certificate that, uh, the certificate connected to private key which uh, signed this is from this domain. The same domain it was in that uh, certificate. So we know someone else didn't put some different uh, certificates and just made the whole thing work and put some random values. Uh, and later, what, what you probably need to do is to check if its CTS profile match is really true. If it's not, some apps might, might still be okay to, to run it, but probably banking apps, which are open source, will, will not want to, to run in a hostile environment where they like malware on the device. And, and then you, you just check the, uh, the package name and the uh, certificate hash, because you, you need to know it's the application that you wrote that is connecting to, to your server. And that, that's basically this. So I will show you uh, that as a demo. I, I made this silly application, uh, Spring Boot Server, which I will run now. And make it a bit bigger. It doesn't matter, but it's like starting. And we have an application that I also run. It's okay? Wow. Yeah, that it's fast. Because it's in Kotlin. Ah, okay. <laughs> so we are, I have this simple application where you want to log into the server and how it works, it first uh, sends these credentials and instead of uh, you having uh, like a token which you can later use for uh, authenticated calls uh, instead of having it returned, you have uh, returned a nonce from the server, and then you are required to, to go to Google with this nonce, and then back to the server to uh, verify that, that you, you are this. So if I submit this, it will do some calls, and I get the secret with the third call to the API, which is using already the, the token after verification on the server. So it, it's very simple. Uh, to prove that it's like doing something, I will remove the uh, Android debug key, which is currently embedded in the server. The, the hash of the Android debug keys is there. Uh, so it's in Android. Uh, the back key store. If I remove this, it will be regenerated for the application. So it will be signed with a different uh, certificate. If I run the application, yes, it's signed with something different. It doesn't matter. It's there. So if I run it and it crashes, I don't know why. It probably shouldn't crash, but it, it's good that it didn't work, correct? <laughs> okay. So let's look at the uh, server side, because it's like almost all the code I've, I've shown you already. 
But this is like the the guts of this. Can you see this? So basically what, what we have there is like a call to login with nonce. You, you send your name, password, and if the credentials are not in the database, which is here, this is my database, then you are not allowed to, you are not getting nonce because it's, there is no point in logging with, when there, you are not in, in the system. So you, are, you have this random generated token that is returned for you. And then after you get the value from Google, you go here. There are some libraries also made by Google. Uh, so the, the string is here as a parameter and it's parsed. And basically all the stuff is like very simple. It's, maybe the method is too long for me, but it's just a demo. I will probably split it. And it checks some stuff. I obviously cannot check if, uh, if the CTS profile match because emulator won't pass, never. It's just based by design. And I, wouldn't, I couldn't show you that on the device uh, because it will, it will be like really weird. And there's like this, the same code you've seen. Um, and of course, then, uh, because credentials are not sent again, then you match uh, nonce from the response with nonce that is stored with your credentials after you, you first call, call it here. Like the nonce is put, so c connected with your account. So you cannot uh, use the same nonce for different accounts. Some like replay attacks or something. And if you, you can also check if, if the nonce is not, uh, if the nonce was, was generated in the last couple of seconds or minutes, uh, because why not? And then you return the token that is used for all the other authenticated calls. So just, just an example, uh, some secret stuff that I'm returning is secret with, uh, with my, my username, just for the presentation. And it's really, really simple, right? So why not use it? Well, do. Uh, what, what I think it's, it's good for, it's basically good for everything. You should, even if you're not uh, using that to block something, you can verify if, uh, if someone like downloaded your app, changed it, and send it uh, to Play Store as a different app, and it's used by some people, which happened to, to my friends in my previous work, like they made a game and they put uh, a key for Crashlytics, I think, and they were getting like hundreds of thousands of uh, reports from a different app that was also in App Store. Was, and they, they discovered it like this, instead of like having it uh, directly from, from their monitoring of the server. Uh, so where, where Safety Net is actually used? It's used by Android Pay, obviously, because it needs to be secure. It checks if your uh, device matches the CTS profile. Uh, and it won't run if it's not. And it is also used by Pokemon Go. So I'm, I'm surprised you never heard about safety net. And they use it basically so that people don't like uh, report their different location and get these useless points or Pokemons or what, what not in, in the application. And uh, I'm not using it in production yet, but I'm writing a, a game uh, that will be open source, will be with ads, will be in in-app purchases. And I, I don't care if it's open source because I can block from the server if I don't, don't want someone to, to continue to hack on the, on the code. I can block them if, if they like put it in Google Play. If they use it for themselves or like to improve the, the game itself, that's cool with me. So uh, I feel that if you made an, a banking app open source, that would be more, more help than, than harm because more people would, would look into the code, not only hackers, which want to make a copy and then put it somewhere and someone will download it and they will get their, their money from their account 
because why not? So this is basically uh, where one, one place it, it won't work is like this uh, casual games without server where all the relevant, relevant code is on the application because that's easy to, to just remove some lines of code to, to do checks and it will still be like complete. So that's not a use case for this. But every time you have a server that is non-trivial, that the, the whole value is in the server code or later in the users in data you store, like Facebook, for example, why not have it open source? No brainer for me. But there's, of course, some problems with that. Uh, I would like to briefly uh, talk about. I mentioned that the, the, you send the API key. Uh, that's basically you, you have a limit of 10,000 uh, requests uh, per month by default. So if you have like 10,000 logins to your application, then it's probably okay. But if you have in hundreds or millions, 100,000 100, or millions, then you probably have to contact Google about your use case that you want to use it. There's a form for that. Uh, so I, I didn't try to, to contact them about uh, having it in uh, like higher level uh, of the limit. Um, so I, I have no idea what to expect if, if, the, if they reply. But it's probably possible if you're like a, a really good app on, on the uh, Google Play, they might listen to you. And also because uh, since like a month, uh, you use this key, someone can grab it from your client and they can like uh, just call the Google API and make your limit to zero. Like use your, use your limit. That's, that's a real shame they, they added it recently in Google Play Services 11.0. It was without this key before and it was, all, it was cool, it was working. And uh, this, is, this solution is software only, so it's, it's basically a race between uh, people who want to hack Pokemon Go and Google to, to improve it. Like from time to time someone like finds a new way to to hack it, to like not be discovered as a rooted device and stuff like that. And that's a good thing because Google has to improve it all, all the time because of that. And sadly it's for Android only because there is this Google Play services and it's download some code to run it on your device. Uh, it won't work on iOS. But there's actually I heard about cool alt alternatives like if you have, uh, if you log into uh, to your service, and then instead of having your token returned to you with a response from the server, you you from the server you send it via push notification, and it basically works the same because if you have this app signed by different certificate, you would you won't get the uh, the push notification because it's designed for your specific app, right? So it's you can do something similar. Also, also, you don't have to use this on Android, but uh, and use it this alternative way uh, with uh, with sending token via push. But it's like it can tell you a lot more about what's happening in, on the device. So uh, that would be this from me, uh, and. I believe this is a, uh, a really cool technology uh, and we should probably at least try to use it in our application not to block anything but to have more insight in, into what's happening on the client side. If someone is hacking Clue and for, for whatever reason, I, I have no idea. We will blow the, the limit in a couple hours, so <laughs> we have to think about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so if you have any questions about like what, what's there beside what I, I briefly mentioned about this, please ask now. Yeah? Uh, is it working with a uh, uh, rooted device? Because most of fun apps just simply say, oh, you, have a, you have a rooted phone and uh, app will just stop. 
Uh, basically, what it uh, uh, what safety net can discover is that your device is rooted, and if you send this data to the server, you can decide if the rooted device or a device that doesn't match the CTS profile uh, should run or not. Basically, there is no problem in running this code on the on the client with a rooted device. It it will just respond to you normally with a success. It, it won't fail unless you hit the rate limit. It will just reply with false uh, for basic integrity and, and the other value. Yeah? Uh, I'm Android developer and I came here with the hope that uh, I will go to my manager and say, let's open source it. But uh, we also have an uh, iOS developer and iOS app. So is any hope that some Google is connected with Apple and they created a combine it? Uh, because as I know, iOS app have different signing mechanism and also so it's it's not possible for, for me right now to open source only Android the version because other can make a copy on the app easily. So uh, so I I don't think there will be like any works between these companies. It's Google made it for from the from themselves, and like they released it, so we can use it. Uh, but what I said before about uh, having a different way to to sign in for the other platforms, whichever that is iOS or web, you can send push notifications, uh, and you you wouldn't have this ability to like copy your client and and work. Uh, around it, because it, it wouldn't return your token from from the server, like with the push notification, it wouldn't work. So we, if you would like to open source it, you would have to at least add this uh, this different way of authenticating to your entire application, to your entire server. And for Android, you could alternatively use this instead of uh, push notifications, whichever is easier for you to work with. So we would have a different call for Android and different for other platforms to authenticate, but they would both be safe to use uh, without being uh, exposed to some different apps connecting to your ser server. Does, does that make sense? Uh, I think that I, I don't understand uh, math behind this and this mechanism with push notification, so I will go to you. So nor normally, if you like log in, you send your, uh, for example, email password, and you get some token in response, right? That's that's how we do it, and you use, use that for all the other calls, and you are authenticated. And if instead, if you return nothing from this call, and send the token via push notification to your application, you would sti still have the same token to to make all the other calls, right? But other like someone someone else if they try to connect to your service and log in with their email password they won't get this token back yeah i see thank you any other questions okay then thank you very much for listening